She arrives at a point 31 meters downstream from the point directly across the river, which is 87 meters wide. Just asking for the speed of the river current. Okay, so here's the river. It's flowing. We're not told how fast. <clears throat> the key to the whole question was the one line where it says the speed of the swimmer relative to the water. That's the big key. That's the, because once you get that, you, you then have the equation because the equation is velocity of moving object E from moving object B's point of view is equal to velocity AE minus velocity BE, E being Earth. <clears throat> Once you know this, you know this. That's the big key. So when it said swimmer from the water's point of view, you now know your two moving objects. And so everywhere you have an A, you put an S, and everywhere you have B, you put a W. And so now we have the equation that describes the answer to this question. Uh, and it tells us this is 87. Now there's one more piece that's missing here. It says, what's the speed of the water? But it doesn't say relative to what. Where are we going to get that? Yeah, I mean, you can look at the equation and say, well, it's not this one. It's not that one. Must be this one, right? And you're right. That's, that is the answer. <clears throat> but how is the speed of water always measured? Yeah, it's, there's always somebody standing on the shore, the earth, looking at the water saying, yeah, that's moving. Does that make sense to everybody? So, so this is always from the Earth's perspective. Movement of air, i.e. wind, that's the same thing, right? We only say it's windy because we've got our feet firmly planted on terra firma, looking at the leaves blowing that way. We say, oh yeah, it's windy. The air is moving relative to the Earth. Does that make sense? So, <clears throat> water and air move from the Earth's perspective. <clears throat> Okay, so um, let me see if I can find a, a better marker here. So let's write this out in the vertical form. Oh, I had it up there. So, uh, velocity of the swimmer from the Earth's perspective, x, velocity water, Earth's perspective, x, subtraction is velocity swimmer from the water's perspective. So you see how I just rewrote that equation? So it looks like this. <clears throat> Remember, you have to break this down in x and y separately. So I did the x here, and all this is going to correlate to a number, a number, and a number. And now we'll do the same thing in the y direction. Velocity, swimmer, earth, y. Velocity, water, earth, y. Subtract, velocity, swimmer, water, y. And now we're going to fill in this blank, this blank, and this blank. Okay, now the picture is, the problem told us that the swimmer swam from one point on the shore to another point straight across. That's a huge piece of information. Where does that go over here? <clears throat> Say it again. Okay, so first of all, this is the swimmer moving that way relative to what? From shore to shore. What do we call that? Swimmer relative to Earth. Okay, so the swimmer relative, the speed of the swimmer relative to the Earth is in which way? You said it, Deltrees. It's in the y direction. 
So what number is going to go here? Zero. Yeah. You all see why that one's got to be zero? She's not swimming side to side. She's swimming straight across. Does that make sense? So this number right here we know is zero. And that's, that's, how you, that's how we get to do this problem. You just, you write out, you're going to have to plug in these six numbers and you just kind of go through and figure them out one at a time. <clears throat> okay. Now, you've got a water, the, 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 the river is going straight one direction. Which direction is it going? X direction, right? So that number is going to go here. So what does that tell us about the number here? Did y'all see that? This one's got to be zero. You see how you just kind of logic your way through each piece of this? You just got to figure it out. <clears throat> now, is the From the water's perspective, okay, well, you, you, you've probably done this before. If you just start out swimming in the water and you just point your nose straight that way, where's she going to end up? She's going to end up down here somewhere, right? As she, as she swims this way, the water's going to push her and she's going to end up over here. So she won't actually go there. What's the only way she can end up straight across? Yeah, she's got to point her nose over here as she swims. Does that make sense? So part of what she's doing has to go upstream. <clears throat> so with that in mind, this is a trick question. Where am I going to put that number? It's a trick question. Say it again. Yeah, this is the hypotenuse of our vector. She's, she's pointing her nose that way. This is the velocity of the swimmer from the water's perspective, crooked. And there's two pieces to it. There's the x piece and the y piece. The x piece is here. So this side is velocity, swimmer, water, the velocity of the swimmer from the water's perspective in the x direction, and this piece here is velocity of the swimmer from the water's perspective in the y direction. And those are the two pieces that are going to go here and here. Does that make sense to everybody? <clears throat> so 1.7 doesn't go anywhere up here, but the pieces of it go over here. Okay, how y'all doing? That's kind of the hard. That's that's kind of a hard part with this. Y'all doing all right? Okay. What was the question anyway? Again, was it did it ask for the angle, or did it ask for the speed of the water? The speed of the water, the swimming speed relative to the shore, and the angle. Okay, so it asked for those three things: the, the, the speed of the water, it asked for the angle, and it asked for the speed of the swimmer relative to the shore. S E Y, speed of the swimmer relative to the shore, right? Okay. <clears throat> Are there any other numbers we can put in here? Say it again. Oh, well, I misheard the question then. Can you read the question again? Because I thought she went straight across. Swimmer heads directly across the river, swimming 1.7 meters per second relative to the water. Okay, wait, wait, slow down. Okay, I misheard the question. Let's read the question again. Go slow. You ready? Go ahead. A swimmer heads directly across the river. Wait, wait, did you catch that? What's the swimmer doing? Heading straight across. Okay, so I had it wrong. I thought she was swimming crooked, so she went straight across. The problem reads, she headed straight across. So I have my picture all drawn wrong. <clears throat> this is not there, but that is.
she's heading sorry I misheard the question she's heading this way velocity of the swimmer from the water's perspective she's going straight in the y direction Okay, and she ends up down here. So she goes this way, and the, the current pushes her this way, and she ends up over here, 31 meters. Okay, so well now we can put this in there. Where does that go? Yeah, she's going straight in the y direction, isn't she? <clears throat> so that's going to go here. Well, something minus zero equals this. Yeah, I, I like that kind of math. I can do that one. We now figured out how fast she's going relative to the Earth in the y direction. Does that make sense to everybody? It is, right here. And if she's swimming straight across that way, she's not swimming relative to the water in the x direction. Like if she wasn't looking at the shores, she's just swimming across the river. Now the river is going with her. From the shore's perspective, she's moving downstream. But from the water's perspective, she's just going across. Okay. Give us give us some more information here. Can you can you read it through from top to bottom again? Swimmer heads directly across a river swimming at one point seven meters per second relative to the water. She arrives at a point thirty one meters downstream from the point directly across the river, which is eighty seven meters wide. What is the speed of the river current? Okay. Okay, so uh, we can get a time out of this, right? We know how fast she swims from the Earth's perspective, and we know how far she traveled from the Earth's perspective. Does that make sense to everybody? So we can say, uh, I'll use a different color, Chris. Okay, so we've got uh, velocity of the swimmer from the Earth's perspective in the y direction is equal to the distance of the Earth in the y direction divided by time. We can find time out of that, right? <clears throat> and so we'll multiply both sides by t. That'll cancel out over there. We'll divide both sides by velocity of swimmer earth in the y direction. And this will cancel out here. So we get time is equal to delta y over velocity of the swimmer from the earth's perspective in the y direction, which is 87 over 1.7. Okay, somebody punch that out. Is that what you said, Clint? Seconds? Okay. Well, guess what? While she was swimming across, the water was pushing her downstream. And we know how far she went downstream, right? Wait, let me say it again. Or let me ask you again. I just said it. What's pushing her downstream? Water. She's not making herself go downstream. The water's making her go downstream. Does that make sense to everybody? So, <clears throat> since we know a distance, we know a delta x from the Earth's perspective, and we know a time, 
What velocity is this? What's pushing her downstream? Yeah, the current's pushing her. This is going to be the velocity of the water in which direction? The x direction. You all see how we're going to get that? <clears throat> so this will be 31 over 51.2. OK. So what's that going to be? Say it one more time. Okay, so now that's a number. We can now put that right here. 0.61. Well, here's another math problem that I can handle. Something minus 0.61 equals zero. I like that kind of math. I think I can handle that. How about 0.61 is the only way that that can possibly work, right? Well, what does that tell us? Well, we already figured that's the velocity. Of the, it was the water that was pushing her downstream. So this is how, far, how fast she's moving downstream. Well, we already knew that. OK. OK. What else, are you all doing all right so far? Is all this kind of making sense? Why which numbers go where? Kind of? Say it again. It is. It's hard to wrap your brain around it. I agree. It's easy when you're helpless. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, what, have, what haven't we a answered? What does it ask? Uh, it's asking for the speed of the river current. Okay. Well, I think we got that, 0.61. Now it's asking, assume the speed relative to the shore. And that was 1.7. Okay. Well, it's asking for the angle. The angle that she goes downstream with? So, this angle, is that what it's asking for? Can you read it again? Oh, okay, so this is a whole new question now. Yeah, it's a whole, yeah, it's A, B, and C. Okay, so can you read, can, can you read part C? Uh, in that direction, in what direction should the swimmer head so as to arrive at the point directly opposite of her starting point? Okay. So do y'all catch how question C is a whole new question? Now it's saying, OK, she no longer points her nose straight across. Now it's saying, this is what I thought it would ask the first place. OK, so now she's going to point her nose upstream. What angle does she have to point her nose so that she does go straight across? Does that make sense to everybody? That's, so that's the new question. It's a whole new question. We've got to erase all this and start over. <laughs> OK, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I got a different, I got, my velocity was 1.9, but I ended up getting 2.15 for my speed running to the for the swimmer. Oh, I see why. Okay. Thank you for pointing this out, Braxton. You get sick for a couple days and all of a sudden your brain falls apart. It asks for speed, right? So going back to the question of what's the speed relative to the speed of the swimmer relative to the shore? Well, look, we've got two pieces. I said it's 1.7. Well, that's part of it. Here's the other part. So we've got 1.7 up 0.61 this way. And so the question is, what's her speed? The answer is this, uh, Earth. Sorry. Thank you for pointing that out, Braxton. OK, sorry. 
it goes a lot better if I don't make mistakes in front of people, but... <clears throat> okay. Uh, so how do we get this orange side over here? Yeah, there you go. Just grab Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And that's how you're going to get a number that's bigger than 1.7. Anybody punch that out? Is that it? Okay. Okay, so now, are you all ready to move on to part C? Any questions? I miss any, did I miss anything else up before we move on? Okay, so let's move on to part C now. Now the new question is, okay, so it's a, a new problem. She's back on this side of the shore and she's figured out, okay, if I just point my nose straight across, I'm gonna go downstream. I don't wanna go downstream. I wanna end up straight across. Now I gotta point my nose crooked. What angle should she point her nose? That's the new question, okay? So um, <clears throat> I'm gonna erase these equations down here and Yeah, we'll erase that too. Now, of these numbers up here, what do I get to keep? What stays the same? Yeah, you're saying it. Yeah, the water doesn't change, right? It's still the same river she's crossing, right? So this part and this part stay the same. Does that make sense to everybody? So this is gone, this is gone, but that stays. This is gone, that stays, and this is gone. Does that make sense to everybody? Because the river itself doesn't change. <clears throat> okay, so now let me redraw my picture here. She's no longer going to be downstream. She's going to go straight across. And now she's going to go crooked. And this is going to be the velocity of the swimmer <clears throat> from the water's perspective is going to be, that's going to be your 1.7. There's going to be an X component and a Y component. We don't know them. Velocity, swimmer, from the water's perspective, X. Velocity, swimmer, water's perspective, Y. But we do know that as she swims, she goes straight across and she ends up straight across. She's figured it out and she goes straight across. Okay, so where, what is this going straight across? What, is, what can I fill in over here because of that? She's only going in the y direction, right? So there's going to be a number here. We don't know that number, but there is a number there. What does it tell us about this? Why is this one zero? She's only going straight across, right? She's not traveling side to side, so this number is a zero. Well, there's some of that math that I can handle. Zero minus 0.61. That's negative 0.61. Hey, look at that. Look, negative, that's velocity swimmer from the water's perspective in the x direction. That's, that's this thing right here, 0.61, oops. And it's, which way is that arrow pointing? Left. What does that sign right there tell us? Left. Hey, we're drawing our picture right. But now look at this. You know two sides of this triangle. Y'all see that? You can get this side over here. What's that side of the triangle going to be? How are you going to get it? You got about a dozen tools to figure that one out. It's a triangle. It's a right triangle. You know two sides. I'd use Pythagorean theorem, right? So I'd do 1.7 squared <coughs> equals 0.61 squared plus the thing we're looking for. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So you're going to subtract that over. 
you could have used Sokotoa also. Anybody punch it out? And then there's some more of that math. This must be 1.59. But it didn't ask us that, so we don't care. It's kind of useless information. It's nice to know. But the question is, what's the angle, right? Where are we going to get that angle? Uh, there's just this triangle right here. Which way were you saying to get it, Deltries? Yeah, we could use cosine, sine, or tangent. We've got all, the, we got all three sides. We can do whichever one you want. You said cosine. Is that what I heard you say? Let's do cosine. So the cosine theta is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. So um, 0.61 over 1.7. Theta equals the arc cosine of 0.61 over 1.7. Yeah, okay, so the way, there's, there's two ways to come at this. Uh, so so you may, in your high school, you may have had it the other way, but I'm gonna show you this way, okay? I don't ever put negative signs in, in these um, ta cosine, tangent, or sine functions. I just, I don't mess with negative signs because it gets confusing. Because if you, if, you if you plug negative signs in, you've got to memorize. You all remember that? Oh, this was miserable. I hated this. You've got to memorize the, the four quadrants and which ones go with which negative signs. And, and even then, sometimes it's not right. And uh, just don't even go down that road. I hate memorizing stuff. I don't, if you're like me, I hate to memorize. I'm horrible at it. <clears throat> I do much better understanding. And here's, what I ha here's how I understand it. I draw a picture. <laughs> Just keep track of it on the triangle. Does that, does that make sense? So just keep track of your positives and negatives with the triangle, but don't plug po positives and negatives up there. Okay? So the key with the method that, I, that I'm trying to teach is draw yourself a good triangle, because that, that'll get you there. Anyway, punch this out. What's that angle? I know it's Ashton's numbers, but... How does it ask for it? It's asking uh, degrees, so you have to Okay, so it's asking for degrees. It says upstream from straight ahead. Okay, so from straight ahead, how far, how far over? So, it asks, so that's not exactly what we found, is it? So it's asking for, let me erase this so we can see it. It's asking for this angle here. And we found that angle. So do 90 minus that to get what web assign is looking for. If it was a test, I'm just going to leave it open-ended and you describe to me the angle that you found. A good picture is a nice way to describe that. But if you want to use a paragraph, that's fine too, as long as you describe it. <clears throat> OK, does that help, Ashton? Does that answer your question? That was a good one to ask. I'd say. Conceptually, relative motion is the hardest part. Math-wise, projectile motion is the hardest. But con understanding what's going on, relative motion is the trick. Math is easy. It's a piece of cake. But figuring out which numbers to put where, that's a challenge. OK, any other questions on this one? We can move on to other questions. I'm just making sure we're done with this one before we move on. OK. What other questions do y'all have? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, what is it, 11? Thursday's 11? Yep. So if you have more questions, you can bring them to the study session. Yeah, go ahead. Just a question where 
it's like a plane, and then there's something that falls out of the plane. Mm. You're supposed to figure out like the angle and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, you may know, just kind of make one up along those lines. Okay. <clears throat> so these days, bombs are controlled by computers, you know, and the, the pilot shoots the, shoots the missile, but then there's, a con there's somebody else running the, like a computer that guides the missile and tells it where to go, right? They haven't always been that way. Uh, also, as a result of that, missiles are incredibly expensive now. Uh, when they first invented this stuff, it was just, there was a, a bombardier sitting in the back of the airplane and, and they'd open the bottom of the airplane and they'd push a button and bombs would start falling out. They have no idea where they're going to land. It's just the way they go. And <clears throat> so this was why in, in World War II they did what they called carpet bombing. This is where they just drop 500 bombs out and hope they hit their the thing they're trying to hit. And uh, so here's, here's the... Uh, so you got an airplane. I can't draw airplanes. I'm, I can draw stick figures all day long, but airplanes, oh, I'm horrible with airplanes. Okay, I'm going to try to draw an airplane here. Okay, uh, airplane, there's the tail up here, and there's the wing. Uh, okay, that's pretend it's an airplane. I know it looks like a sick shark, but just pretend. Okay, so there's an airplane, and it drops a bomb. Okay, so the airplane is traveling with a speed of, I don't know, 80 meters per second. And it's, here's the ground, it's uh, 1.3 kilometers off the ground. <clears throat> and, and the bombardier just pushes the button and lets the bomb fall. The question is, where does the bomb hit the ground? Okay. What's going to be the path? Is this the question that you were looking for? Okay. What's the path that this bomb is going to take? What's the shape of it going to look like? Yeah, it's going to go like, like this, right? What is that shape? There's a math word for that. This is a parabola, right? So this, this bomb is going to take this shape. It's going to go like this. It's, it's a piece of a parabola. And it's going to hit over here. It started here. So the delta x is going to be this. The delta y is going to be that. How do we solve these problems? Step one, split it up in the x and y direction. So we're going to do our x motion here and our y motion here. What equation do we apply in the x direction? Only number one. You cannot apply, don't try any other equations. It's the only one that can work. So we're going to use velocity in the x direction is equal to delta x over t. And it's delta x that we're looking for. But we don't know t either. Do we know vx? What is it? It's our 80. Do y'all see that? Notice, it, because the plane was going in the x direction at 80, so is the bomb, because the bomb is attached to the plane. And when the bombardier just pushes the button, all that means is the plane lets go of the bomb. By the way, when the bomb hits the ground over here, where's the airplane? Directly above it. Right there. My plane just got worse. Anyway, the, the plane, when the bomb hits the ground here, the plane is directly above it, right where it was when it dropped it. From the plane's perspective, it's as if the bomb went straight down. Because they're, they're both moving forward. Okay? So, uh, so this number here, it's the only one we know, this number here is 80. 
but we don't know delta x or t. Two unknowns, one equation, what does that mean? We need another equation. Where are we going to get it? We're going to go the y direction, we're going to use number three. Does that make sense to everybody? So let's use number three. We'll rewrite number three. Oops, I'll try not to fall over here. We'll rewrite number three in terms of the y direction. So it's going to be delta y is equal to v naught y times t plus one half a y times t squared. <coughs> What numbers do we know here? We know v naught y. What did you say it was? Why is that zero? Yeah, all they did was just, they, they were holding on to the bomb and then they let go. They didn't throw it down, they just let go. So its initial velocity in the y direction is zero. Okay, what else do we know? We know delta y. What's that? close. First of all, it's got to be negative. Why does it have to be negative? It's going down. Second of all, we've got to change the units. So this is kilometers. We need meters. So this is going to be, so the number that gets plugged in here is negative 1300. Okay. And, and Clint said one more. What's this one? Yeah, but which way? There we go. So I'm going I'm to plug in. I'm just going to write, well, that's fine. Negative 9.81. Okay, so we know everything here except for one piece, right? What is it we don't know? T. Let's get T out of this. So let's, let's rewrite this before we plug in any numbers. Let's solve it for T first. Okay, so uh, we're going to have delta Y over here is equal to this thing, which is zero. So I'm going to have... Uh, negative, so we'll have negative h equals negative g over 2 times t squared. So I plugged in the negative signs, but not the numbers. Okay. How are we going to get this for t? Okay, so we'll multiply both sides by 2. Divide both sides by what? G and a negative sign. So multiply both sides by 2 over negative G. So the negative cancel out, the G will cancel out, the 2 will cancel out. Here the negative sign will go away. Okay, so now we've got T squared equals 2H over G. How do we get rid of the square? Square root both sides. <clears throat> so t is equal to the square root of 2h over g. Okay, so we can get time out of this. This will be square root of 2 times h, which is 1300, divided by g, 9.81. How much time does that take? <coughs> What'd you say? Is that what you said? Okay. Well, what does that do for us over here? That gives us T. Now we can find delta X. That's what the question is asking, right? <clears throat> so we'll just multiply both sides by T. That goes away. And now we get delta X equals VX times T. So we can plug this in, 80 times 16.27. And that will give us delta x. Uh, if it is, it's a coincidence. It doesn't have to be. What'd you get? <laughs> it, it, it's just a coincidence. They don't have to be. So the question is, should it be close to the 
1300 here? It, it, the answer is it, it might, it doesn't, it's not required to or not, requ it, it, it could be, it's not, it's not set. Okay, how y'all doing, how y'all doing? Does that answer your question? What other questions do y'all have? Yeah. Such as what? I don't remember. Oh, okay. Like that mountain problem that was 3D and you, the, the, the hiker walked one way and then how tall was the mountain? And Yeah, it was just a series of triangles. The hardest part about that one is visualizing. Where's the mountain? Where's the hiker? You should know that you should do that. So for this class, if, if, I, if the question asks for a vector answer, you should give the answer in IJK. Does that make sense? So if, it, if, it's, if it's asking for a vector answer, you need to give it in IJK. Some number I had plus, and there might be one, like K might be zero if it's a 2D problem, but which is pretty likely. Does that answer your question? Do you want to talk through the mountain problem? OK. OK. You, go ahead. What was your? Are you providing an equation sheet? Am I providing an equation sheet? Yes, it's on the, it's on the uh, so the equation sheet's on the um, class website. And yeah, you should go ahead and download a copy and, and bring it to the test. So you can use it on the test. And the primary equations, let's see. Looking at the equation sheet, Looks like you're just going to use, can I see that for a second? <clears throat> wow, you laminated this. That's the way to go. You're going to be using the, these first four equations. Relative motion. F equals MA. I think that's about all, as far as we've gone so far. I like that. Cardstock too. Is that cardstock? Or is it just the lamination makes it tougher? Nice. <laughs>